Welcome, everybody, to a very special episode of the Bad Batch Review slash Star Wars Saturday. On this episode, we'll be breaking down some Star Wars news, along with obviously breaking down uh, the newest episode of Bad Batch. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce first to the Bad Batch Review and to Star Wars Saturday, good friend of mine, Joe. What's going on, Joe? How you doing? Thanks for having me. Appreciate being here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Once me and Joe potted with Pete and found out that we both love Star Wars, anything Star Wars I do, Joe has to be a part of it. So um, I got to keep that going. Thank you. Absolutely. And Joe, I did just check out your review for um, Mortal Kombat. I watched it a few nights ago. I even made sure you liked it. Thanks. Um, (laughs) I was a little taken back when your co-host was just like, I hated it. (laughs) I was just like, oh. Yeah, (laughs) he's a strong word. (laughs) <laughs> but because I even I even told her, I said, look, I actually I was entertained. It right. you know it did its job, right? But uh, yeah, yeah, it was. I don't know. There were uh, people have because it's based off of something that people love, so it's always yeah. going to be held to higher standards. So if it doesn't meet it, I do get how some people are like. <laughs> um, but yes. Uh, also, AJ, what's going on, AJ? I'm feeling good. Um, I watched so many shows and movies the other night. I- Bro, I wanted to text you. <laughs> I legit did the same thing. So I I did Bad Batch, right? Mm-hmm. Went right into Modoc, which, by the way, let me just, this is not a Modoc review. So everyone just, you know, but I want to agree with you, AJ. I've never been a fan of the, the animation of Robot Chicken. Mm-hmm. Never been. So I don't like that they, ch- but you know what I found out, AJ? Do you know why the animation of Modoc is like Robot Chicken? Why? Seth Green is a fucking executive producer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that makes like, sense. Okay. As soon as I saw it, because I, I, I always look at in credits because um, my dad's a big music guy. He's a singer. So, you know, credits mean everything to musicians. Mm-hmm. So I grew up always, you know, looking at credits. So it, it just, it piqued my interest. I was like, why is it like this? Like maybe there's an animator that's the same from Robot Chicken. So I'm watching it, and the first thing it says is executive producer Seth Green. And I was just like, well, there you go. That's why. It's not like it's a bad show or anything. It's just. No, it's just the animation is not good. You know, you know what I can picture? I can picture you as a young boy years, years, years ago, just sitting in the theater, watching the end credits roll. And you're thinking to yourself, I wonder if this will play out sometime when I get older, sitting there at the end of a movie, watching the end credits roll. I wonder if this will ever uh, play out for me. Yeah. And then Marvel comes in and I'm just like, well, what do you know? No, (laughs) this is what I've been training for my whole life. Which is funny because remember this, there was, well, let me, let me not speak for everyone. Me and my dad did not know that there was an end credit scene for Iron Man. I don't think anyone did. I think that no. was at the time, no, right? no one did. Yeah. So, you know, we're sitting there because we enjoy watching the credits, you know, seeing who was actually in the suit when RDJ wasn't and blah, blah, blah. So we were sitting there. Everyone actually, I'm lying. Somebody, I didn't, I didn't know, but somebody, because uh, I didn't see it opening night. Iron Man was probably oh. the first MCU movie I didn't see opening night. Mm-hmm. So somebody told me, by the way, there's an extra scene at the end. Wow. And they're like, and you're welcome. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then obviously after that, every Marvel movie afterwards, you you were expecting it. So yeah, kids yeah I would today, never have known. Kids today will never appreciate how beautiful pre-2010 was yeah. because you just had no information about anything. It was right. just very little, very little to report on. Except for word of mouth. That was it. Right, right. Yeah. Internet didn't, like people assume internet took off in like the very early 2000s. To what it is today wasn't until like 2009, 2010. Yeah. To where it is today, where it's like you got to wake up like me and AJ at 4 a.m. to watch it or Twitter spoiling it. Like that was something that 2010 and on it started yeah. from there. Um, but yes, AJ. So you know, uh, I did um, Bad Batch, Modoc, and then I went to Army of the Dead. I fell asleep on Army of the Dead, so I had to finish <laughs> when I when I woke. No, no, no. Just so anyone listen, I'm not saying it was a snooze fest. No, I, again, it's 4 a.m. Um, so I finished it when I woke up. Um, Zach should definitely focus more on that and maybe stop trying to, to get DC. But anyway, yeah, that's, yeah, that's um, I'm, I'm actually going to watch that when we're done. Oh, please I mean, do. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. It's something I recommend because anyone who knows Zach knows zombies is what got him. Well, let me not say that. Zombies was one of his big breaks doing zombie movies. That was one of his gotcha. biggest movies. 
So it's like, you know, if you enjoyed, one that put them on the map a little bit. Right, right, right. So if you enjoyed that, this is from the same the same elk. So, you know, if you enjoyed that, I think you'll enjoy this. Got it. Um, but all right, so we're going to get into some Star Wars news. I, I want to leave the, the biggest and the best news item for last. I want to start off with Rangers of the New Republic ultimately being shelved. Mm-hmm. I ultimately believe that is due to one thing and one thing only. They do not want the negative uh, feedback that the firing of Gina Carano um, will ultimately lead to. Like, ultimately, people who love Gina Carano are like, all right, she's not in The Mandalorian, whatever. She was the main character. Who cares? Anyone who knows, Knights up, not Knights, wow, Rangers of the New Republic was supposed to be led by her. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you axing it is your way of saying, maybe we didn't really need it. Like, maybe we can implement that somewhere else. We don't need a show about it. Um, that bothers me because I was, as, as you know, AJ, I was hoping that they would just revolve the show around Hera. Um, yeah, that's what I was hoping to. Yeah, but ultimately, hopefully Patty Jenkins uses Hera as a, as a main character in, in her movie. Because then I can kind of say, okay, fine, you know, no problem. But Rangers of the New Republic was clearly set up in season two of The Mandalorian when she got the patch back or the, the medal, mm-hmm. whatever it was. So clearly the goal was always to give her that own show to allow Mandalorian to kind of stretch its legs, maybe bringing in more Mandalorians. Um, so it being shelved kind of just seems like their way of saying, you know what, this is a bad situation. We don't need to get worse. Um, let's just shelf it. You know, probably not that many people are that interested in it anyway. So let's shelf it. Um, but Joe, I'll start off with you. What are your thoughts on uh, Rangers of the New Republic getting shelved? So, I mean, it, it's, it's Star Wars, so I would have watched it. Uh, but I, I will admit, uh, even if Gina Carano was in it, I really didn't have any, I didn't have much interest in it when it was announced. Uh, I can understand and I, and I agree with you. I think a lot has to do with the fact that I don't think so much, maybe it is from the negative feedback that they might get if they would have went forward, but it also could be maybe now again, how much have, how they couldn't have had that much invested in it because it was just, it was just announced. I don't think anything was shot. I don't think anything was planned. However, if they were going to uh, revolve it around her, a specific character, like Gina Carano's character, they might like, be like, wait a minute, now what do we do? You know, so they might not be, they, I don't know if it's because they don't, they don't know who they would get for another lead. Uh, I mean, Hera could, could have worked. Uh, they could have even just did it with uh, the actor from, uh, what, what is it, Kim's Convenience, the, you know, the other uh, pilot that gave her oh, the badge. Yeah, yeah. I can't think of his name. That's why I said it. But yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Um, you know, they could have just made the show about him and other other, other characters. But I, I get it. You know, it could be like I said, you know, you might be right. It could be a combination of things. It could be because of the negative feedback that they're trying to avoid. Um, all, or they could just say, hey, when, you know, we had everything planned. We had all the st- our stock put into this character that Gina Carano portrayed on The Mandalorian. Now that she's gone there, what do we do? So I don't really know. But yeah, I. Either way, I would have watched it, but I really wasn't that, you know. I was I was only invested because I'm like, Hera is such a character that Rebels didn't really flesh out enough because the right. focus was being pulled in so many different directions. Uh, it's an ensemble show, you know, quite like, even though I always tell people, Clone Wars is an ensemble show, but it's really not because it only focuses on three characters. Um, ultimately, it's Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Ahsoka. Right. They're in almost every episode. <laughs> you see other Jedi sporadically. Um, that was my biggest issue is that we didn't see other Jedi more. Like if you remember the first two seasons, by the way, one of the greatest Clone Wars that uh, Clone Wars episodes ever was Grievous's Lair. That was one of the most chef kissing episodes I've ever seen. Because you get to see other Jedi, you get to see them, you know, kind of really live out. And it was one of those moments to where it's just like, damn, the war could have ended right there. Right there, the war would have been over. You eliminate Grievous, mm-hmm. it extremely cripples Dooku. Extremely yep. cripples him. So that was really interesting uh, when I think back. But um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just was really hoping this was this show could be Hera's moment, you know, where we can get a lot more of Hera. Um, but I, I, there was a show on BBC, I think, that recently just got canceled because of allegations against their star. They were trying to figure out could they continue the show, 
but ultimately they couldn't figure out a natural way to do it. So they just canceled the whole show. Like the, the network didn't cancel the show. They just decided there's nothing we can do with this without our lead. Was the show already, was the show already on air? Oh yeah. They were working on the third season. Yeah. They were working on the third season. Yeah. Then that's different because of that. I can understand, but I think they've had so much. That's why I don't know if it has that much to do with Gina Carano because They've had so much time. Well, they have so much time. Like they, if they don't have to rush it, they could they could do other things with the show if they really wanted to put it out. You know, right. like you said, either include Hera or include another character or just just nix any character and go with whatever they were going to do. I have no idea. I think, but- I think they wanted to stick with Gina for a specific reason throughout the entire like overall story, story arc with um, the Mandalorian and Ahsoka and stuff like that. He was the connective tissue. Yeah. Right. I think he yeah. wanted he wanted to give leads of these shows to characters right. that they could bring back in, and the fan base would go, "Oh, I know who that is because she was in The Mandalorian." Mm-hmm. But when you when you nix that and bring in a whole new character, you're now depending on that character to sell for then people to get invested enough for when they come back into. Well, the- technically, there is a way you could put Hera in it. Especially since with um, the Mandalorian introducing Bo Katan, introducing Ahsoka, introducing um, Kanan from um, Bad Batch, they yep. they um they can introduce Hera within the um, overall story arc within the things that's going to tie in with Ahsoka, like um, Ezra and just stuff like that. So so there is a way to to um, help us sell that connection with Hera. But I would have been fine with Bill Burr's character coming back for a couple of episodes. I could have even did that. Yeah. If you're going to do something like, so not just that, the connective tissue between each show. So obviously you have the Mandalorian. Now you're going to have the book of Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're going to have the Ranger show. So all these shows are going to have something in common. They're going to have the connective tissue. And I understand Gina Carano was that because she was a recurring character in the Mandalorian, but without her, you could add other elements. Now, obviously, um, uh, uh, I'm now I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Ming Na Wen's character. Um, oh, uh, Fennec. Fennec. Mm-hmm. Fennec's gonna be with Boba, so we can't use that. Although I would have loved a show just with the girls. That that episode yeah. when they were kicking ass, that finale episode when it was Fennec, uh, Gina Carano's character, and um, and Bo Katan. Yeah, Cara Dune. Cara Dune and Bo Katan. Yeah, those three. That was a cool scene. That was. <laughs> To a there's, degree, there's that's no, why I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, AJ. There's there's no saying that Fennec's character might not like deviate from Boba's. Um, I don't think the book of Boba is long term. I don't. I think it's just a one off. I right. I really I really do think. Now, to be fair, if it hits, like if this is like a hit, like Mandalorian season one was, I could see Filoni going back to the drawing board and saying, "All right, let's figure out a way to expand this." But um, I don't know. Like, everyone always assumes it's called the Book of Boba. So clearly there has to be chapters in the book, which is fair. But the chapters could also be episodes. Episodes, right. Yeah. Right. So it's like that could be one book. So um, so I, I don't know. I, I love Finnick. Um, I, we, AJ, we can't say too much about Finnick because Joe, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, there's not much to say really right now. We're on a guy. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, so I think Rangers of the New Republic might have been heading towards an all, not an all, but a majority of a female led cast, Mm -hmm. um, being led by Gina. So I, I, I'm with you, Joe. I don't think Gina was the be all to end all, but I do have a feeling it does lend a little bit. Like if she wasn't, if, if that whole thing didn't go down and she wasn't fired, I don't see this show still being act. So I think it has something to do with it. Um, but I could see that Dave Filoni looked at the board and went, do we need this? No, no, maybe we don't. Maybe we don't. Maybe we figure out another way. Or maybe Filoni thought that what Patty's doing with her movie lends on some of the elements of what they were going to do for Rangers of the New Republic. That's so possible. It's very possible that he said, you know what? We don't need to double down on this. I was going to say, it might even, that might even be redundant. Not, I know it has nothing. I know they're really not the same, but they are. Maybe they felt that maybe the show and the movie would be redundant because they're they're pretty similar. Yeah, I mean that's possible. We know um, Patty Jenkins' movie is purely about the pilots. Like there, yeah. there probably will be no Jedi, no Sith. Yeah. It's just about the idea of the pilots, right? 
So it's like Rangers of the New Republic could have been a blend of both. Could have been a blend of pilots and a seeing an Inquisitor or a Jedi at some point down the down the road, whether it's Ahsoka or, or whatever. Um, so who knows? But this isn't the show that I'm like, oh man, this show they canceled. It's yeah. like, okay, all right, you know, I trust Filoni, no problem. <laughs> um, it was just like, you know, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when everyone was freaking out when Feige was like. Yeah, Captain America 3 is being called Serpent Society. And everyone was just like, what? Why would you do that? And I was just, I was the only one sitting there just like, I mean, he's batting for 100 right now. <laughs> like, let's see what he can do with it. Then obviously when he's like, nah, just kidding, it's Civil War. It's like, what? <laughs> like, why? But um, so to me, it's the idea of I trust Dave Filoni. And that leads us into our next topic, which is... Dave Filoni, and this is not news with anyone within Star Wars. They knew this last year because he got promoted to this last year. But for us, this is news with him becoming creative director of Star Wars over there. So this essentially sounds like what Feige is doing with Marvel now. He has the say-so on comic books, the video games, the movies, the shows, um, now, I don't know if Filoni's power is as strong as Feige's. But I don't think Dave can go, no, you're not going to make that show. Like, I don't think Feige, that. In terms of Kevin Feige, it's more like in terms that he's he's um, Kathleen Kennedy at the same time as being a Dave Filoni for Star Wars sense. Um, right. Dave Filoni right. is only there just to be the creative for the story. Right. While Kathleen Kennedy is just there, there to make everything make sense money wise and business wise. Right. Yeah. Which is genius, which is what I said, AJ, when everyone kept poo pooing all over Kathleen Kennedy. I kept reminding people Kathleen Kennedy found a way to make Solo make money. That is a movie that anywhere else would have been shelved, would have been scrapped, thrown in the garbage. Uh, it would have been delayed. She found a way to bring in Ron Howard. Make it work. Now, if you like the movie, don't like the movie, that's not what this conversation is about. It made money. Did it make yeah. Star Wars money? No. But there's a lot of movies that um, would love to make solo money. Whose decision was it to, to release in May? What was that? May? That's probably a Kathleen Kennedy, uh, you know, a, a sign. But also, to be fair, I always said this. I said, I think Kathleen or whatever the team is, is overestimating the popularity of Star Wars being sandwiched between Spider-Man and Deadpool 2. That's a tall ask with a movie with no lightsabers. That's a really tall order. Mm -hmm. But she did it, and it still found a way to make money. Again, not earth-shattering box office numbers, but it made money that, you know, my left foot would love to make. So, to me... <laughs> She did something that is very difficult to do with that movie. So to me, I always say she's one of the best numbers people in the game. You want your movie to make money, bring it to Kathleen. Well, she's a great it. producer. She's one of the best, she probably yeah. is the best producer of all time. And I want to say to everyone who, who always shits on Kathleen Kennedy, she, this is rumored. This is, I, I don't think you can find any documentation of it anywhere. But rumor has it, she was the one that uh, was side, side by side with Dave Filoni and that's the reason why we got a season seven of Clone Wars. She was fighting the battle with Dave to get that made. Okay. So, um, so to me, Kathleen Kennedy is um, is a great numbers person. But AJ, as you know, I've been saying this for years. She just needs to bring in someone who just knows the product better than she does. That's it. There's no slight to her. I don't think she needs to be fired. I don't think Dave Filoni needs to replace her. I don't think Dave wants to be that guy. I really don't. I don't think Dave wants to be the guy that comes in and goes, you can make this movie, you can't make this movie. I think he'd much rather be the guy that walks in a room and goes, what does everyone want to do? You want to make a movie? You want to make a show? All right. How can we make it to where it's all consistent, all on the same, you know, same accord? That's what I think Dave likes to do. I don't think he wants to be the guy swinging the hammer. Kathleen. Yeah, not if it has to be a Kevin Feige. That, that's what I, that, that's that's what I always pressure. say. That's, that's what I a, always say, AJ. That's a lot of pressure right there. You don't. You don't always need that. You just need two people. You need a numbers guy or or or, or gal, whatever. You need a numbers person, <laughs> and you need a creative person, because usually one fights against the other. 
So you you to have that as the same person is usually always hard. So you just need two different people. One that's purely creative that loves the product and one that loves the kaching. To and me, that's what I think they have now. To me, Kathleen Kennedy is two different people. You got Kathleen Kennedy as the producer. Produced, you know, goes as far back as the original Star Wars, uh, Indiana Jones. I mean, she's been around for decades. Yep. She is brilliant. And as I said, she will go down as probably the best producer ever. Yep. As a studio head, not so much. And I think that's where she needs to lose her title. If she just sticks around, what, what's it? No, what? no, I was just going to say elaborate. You mean if like she sticks some... around as a producer, oh, if she's just a soul, just solely a, uh, a producer for Star Wars, mm-hmm. then I could, but as a head of Lucasfilm, making all the decisions, no. Because that's where that's where uh, Star Wars, the, the sequel trilogy, went wrong. That's where Solo went wrong. Solo might have made money, but it is in terms of Star Wars, it was a, it was a failure. And one of the big reasons why it was a failure, not only because of the release in May, but because they did a horrible job. Now, I don't know if this is on her, but they did a horrible job of promotion. There was literally no promotion until I think like the week before the movie came out because they had to worry about the Marvel movies. Right. They went, what they did was Disney doubled down because like, oh, May, that used to be our month. That used to be our thing, but it's no longer a Star Wars thing anymore. Now it's, now it's every other uh, box office hit. Now it's your Marvel movies. Now, so they tried to double down against themselves because they're Marvel too. Mm-hmm. And Marvel Studios won. And they took- well, No, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm just saying it took the buzz away from Solo and there really was no buzz. I mean, yeah, there was some promotion, but there were a lot of people that had no idea this movie was coming out. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I, don't, what... I don't disagree with that, but I will say she doesn't necessarily need to lose her title. I think the position Filoni got is because of her. I think she's I think she's starting to understand she doesn't need to do everything. Right. right. You know, and, and I, I, like, I find it. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, AJ. At the time, she was trying to be like a Kevin Feige, right, um, right, going into creative choices, going to the um, business side of things. Um, now, I think now she's starting to under, understand that she doesn't need to do both roles, and right. that that takes a lot of pressure off of her anyway. So, I think the choice of her bringing in Dave Filoni was a good choice on her behalf, and she's made many, 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 many a lot more great choices. Over bad. over the ne- um, bad choices that she made. Without her, we wouldn't get season seven. Without her, we wouldn't have gotten um, Rebels. Rebels. We wouldn't have gotten the uh, Force uh, the- Mandalorian. We wouldn't have gotten the any Force of the newer. Hmm? The Force video game with Cal Kestis. Yeah, yeah. Basically everything new, ex- including comics as well. So- and I want to say, if we are putting if we are putting this at the feet of Kathleen. I want us to remember this. No one thought after, well, let me not say no. I don't think a lot of diehard Star Wars fans after Force Awakens thought, yo, what is she doing, bro? Like, this is stupid. She has no idea what she's doing. A lot of people felt that only after The Last Jedi. After Force Awakens, you're right. After, right. after, so, after Force Awakens, there was no doubt. There was right. none. Because right, we, but that's what I'm saying. It was such a high note. I mean, there were people that criticized the film for being a carbon copy of the original movies, but Sure. I thought I love Force Awakens. I thought it, I loved it. A, lot, a lot more people loved it than hated it. it was yeah. The, yeah. It was right. I mean, to me, to me, I don't think there was, because to me, when you're bringing in these old characters, you want to feel what it used to feel like. Like, I'll say this, right? By the time we get X Men, the MCU will feel drastically different than it felt back in 2010, right? So if by the time we get two Avengers movies from that, like, whatever this next one is, the one after that. Let's say the, the one after that is X-Men versus the Avengers, right? Mm. And Stark and Cap come back. And Feige kind of makes it feel like how Avengers movies used to feel. I wouldn't be mad because it's a carbon copy of maybe uh, Infinity War. No. I would say, yes, bring that feeling back. I, yeah. I, I want to feel what it used to feel like with, with keeping hold of what it's going to be going forward. But what they did was they, they did it they, I mean, him. Maybe, maybe Abrams played it safe, but either way, I think he, he took he took the blueprint of what people loved, and made a newer version of right. the movie. Here's the funny thing. Here's the funny thing. And then AJ, I'm gonna let you pop in because I know you wanted to, to add something. Here's the funny thing, right? People go Force Awakens. I hated it because it was a carbon copy. Do something original. 
Ryan Johnson <laughs> comes in, does something completely original. I go. hate you being original. Do what I want. And it's like, I don't know what you want, guy. I gave you the, the feeling of old. I gave you the feeling of new. You want it neither. I don't know what you want from me, people. But but go ahead and uh, what were you going to say, AJ? This, this is going to get some hate on me. Um, the Rise of Skywalker mm-hmm. is proof that fans don't know what they want. Legit, everything J.J. Abrams put in in Rise of Skywalker was basically every, everything fans wanted. And and they they still complain regardless. So this is I think this is why studios like DC, studios like Star Wars should just stick with their guts yeah. um, instead of um, instead of following what fans want and stuff like that. Much like what Kevin Feige is doing, he doesn't really. For me personally, I don't think he really cares what the fans like want, but it's more know. like what they need. Yeah. I don't know. I won't I won't say that. I think he does. I just think he doesn't cater to it. I think he definitely yeah. like he clearly adds in things that he knows we want to see or we want to hear. Um, like the fact that he had Stark and uh Doctor Strange team up in Infinity War with Spider-Man was very much of yeah. him playing off. He knew he knew like we would love to see the two Sherlock Holmeses together. Trying to he, he made, he made sure that it focused more on story rather than right. the focus of what the fans right. want. To now, where I'll say he doesn't cater is when you look at what Snyder's cut d- did. I think he did cater a lot to what he he knew fans wanted. Um, he knew what fans wanted before the fans even knew they wanted it. Right, right. Which again, catering is never a bad thing when yeah, you're exactly. catering to fans. When you cater to mainstream, it's always my problem. Mainstream doesn't know the the source material. So why are you catering to them? Mainstream is very much, I could drop, um, I could drop a TikTok song and mainstream would eat it up. But hardcore fans would go, dude, this song was out 15 years ago. What 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 are you talking about? That's not a new song. But to them, they don't know any better. So when you cater to them, it's always idiotic. You cater to your fans, the guys that got you there, and allow us to be the gatekeepers that then tell them whether or not it's good or bad. But if you cater to the fans, you'll never have a problem. But there is some sometimes a problem of catering too much, where you're just like, you're just thr- like, a lot of people thought this was cute. I thought it was catering for all the wrong reasons. Chewbacca getting the medal at the end was just like, who did you put this in here for? I don't think anyone walked into this movie going, dog, you know what I thought about yesterday? Chewie never got that medal. Like, I don't think any, I don't think that was an itch anyone needed scratched. So that's when you cater too much. Um, but go ahead, Jeff. No, I'm actually going to be honest. Uh, for some reason, I have no idea why I don't, because it's not a scene that I thought I needed. Right. I actually choked up a little bit when that scene happened. Really? I, do, I have no idea why. The only scene that actually got me a little bit choked up in that movie was that when he gets just knowing, just knowing, you know, where it came from. Right. It's been around for so long. I mean, we've seen it way back in the New Hope, and you know, it was Hans, and just the way it was passed down to him. I think that's what it was. But I agree with you. I mean, it was something that was definitely not needed. That was the only version I knew, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to be fair, to be fair, I'll speak for myself only. I won't say a lot of people. I'll speak for myself only. I forgot Chewie never got the medal. Yeah. <laughs> so when yeah. It, when he got it, I was just like, "Oh yeah, that's right." They did blatantly look Chewy in the face and go, "Pretty much, yeah." No, you're not getting one of these. It's like, but I helped. Yeah, no one cares. <laughs> now I don't. No now going cares. back to really quick about the rise of Skywalker, I my issues with that movie weren't weren't really about what that it catered to the fans. It was a lot of JJ had to do a lot of course correction in the beginning of the film. He didn't call the course correction, but let's be honest, that's what it was. Correction, yeah. There were a few things that he had to change or he wanted to change, you know, the whole Luke Skywalker catching the lightsaber and saying, hey, you know, treat this with respect, which I'm glad we got. But it's certainly like there was a lot of things that he had to add to try to course correct. But mm-hmm. there were things that just didn't make any sense. And that's what I didn't like about the film. What 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 bothered me about Rise of Skywalker included, but of course, Last Jedi is it wasn't an actual continuation of Force Awakens. Right. That's where that's what went wrong with the the, the last two films. It was like a reinvention. 
Um, but I, I will say Rise of Skywalker couldn't do that because of how far of, Ryan exactly. went off right off the, the, right. the scale. Um, but I mean, even something small like you killing Kylo Ren off at the end. Like to me, I don't know what it is about the Star Wars mythos. Once you're redeemed, it means you have to die. Like no one has ever redeemed and then lived through the redemption. It's always, ah, oh, you're a good guy now. And it's like, I only saw the error of my ways. Like, can't wait to be on you guys' side. And it's like, ugh. No one told him. Oh yeah, you gotta die, dog. Like you yeah. can't, <laughs> you can't make it any further in this story. You gotta die here. Um, so to me, it was just like, and, and I, <laughs> AJ, AJ always argues with me about this. I didn't like her taking on the last name Skywalker. Felt as though you could have set that up better. Um, I did not feel as though her relationship with Leia was strong enough for Leia to be the like, con- yeah, no, take our last name. Concept of it was great, but I do agree that. It all should have been developed. Like this is this the same thing I think for like Batman vs Superman. These movies could could have been like three different movies, but they chose to bring everything together. And for sure, it, it felt like they were rushing just to make the money. That this- also, I will say, Star Wars could have been ahead of the curve because Star Wars could have given us shows that weaved into the movies. And that's where you could have gotten, like, I would have liked a show in between those movies, again, if, especially if those movies were more so uh, connected, but a show where it shows the, 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 um, the other, the galaxy outside of these main characters. So us seeing some of these planets that have to, that have to, you know, go on in life under the rule of the, the new, the new empire, Right. So I see well, that's what they did in terms of comics though. If they switched up like what they're doing in the comics into like the TV shows, it would mm-hmm. I I agree it would have been a lot more it would have been more better than what we've well, got. We can right do now. that now going forward with Disney Plus. Yeah. That's what they do with Marvel they, now. They like I, I I know we read the books, but books just aren't as big as they used to be. They're just right. not. No, no one reads the not. Well, that's how I felt, and that's what that's what bothered me. They bought what bothered me, especially there was a couple of things in the Rise of Skywalker, uh, as recent as the Rise of Skywalker, that you had to read in like the uh, the novelization of the movie or something like that. I'm like, I why do I have to read a book about the film to understand the film? Like, you couldn't tell me that was Mustafa in the beginning of the film, you couldn't tell the audience that that's what that was. Like, why you know, there was a couple of things in the novelization that you come to find out that you probably it would have been nice to know as an audience member watching the movie. Exactly. And, and that's why I said a Kylo Ren series would have been perfect. Yeah. Um, I still think it'll be perfect. I really hope, I really do hope because that's the other thing too. Like, okay, let's the fan. What did the fans want? Fans wanted to see the Knights of Ren. They finally get the Knights of Ren and the rise of Skywalker. And the only thing they're doing is getting a 360 uh, a cam view Sitting on top of a, standing on top read, of a read boulder. Read the comics, then you'll get a lot of them. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but, but that's what we're saying. Exactly. That's what we're saying. Give us it in a live action format rather than the books, because the books is something not everybody's going to cater to to the movie fans or anyone. And that's the main, that's the main um, plot point of every, everything Star Wars. Um, you have to focus, which I think they're doing now, which is fine because they're doing series um they're doing movies yes. i think they need to loosen up on the focus on comics and novels because not a lot of people read or choose not to read right. which i think is terrible because you guys should read these comics because they're incredible comics and books should be an expanse of, on on the series Expan- it, should yeah, be, yeah, yeah. it should be an expanse on the series but it shouldn't yeah. give you details that you don't like you know what i'm saying it shouldn't give you details that you could have seen or should have seen in a movie. Yeah. You right. Know? I'll like, even say to me, the book should be how we get newer stories, newer okay. stories that aren't necessarily directly involved. Like, for example, as much as I'm loving Bad Batch, right? If Bad Batch coming off of Clone Wars season seven wanted to be a book that they later adapted, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Okay. Because Bad Batch is something, you know, obviously whatever they're doing with it, we'll, we'll, we'll know by the end of the season. But a year ago when we heard that Bad Batch was being made, I don't think any of us thought, oh, this is going to lead into The Mandalorian or this will lead into Force Awakens. We kind of just thought it's an extension on whatever they're doing in season seven. And then that'll be its own thing because it's so early on in, yeah. in the Empire. 
So to you know, so to me, you want to introduce a new character like Cal Kestis, put that in a book. Yeah. But if it's something that's part of a continuity that you've established in the movies or a TV show, don't make me have to read that shit. Put it in. Put it in the show. Put it in the movie. Well, they got the Cal Cal Kestis was uh, told through the video game though. Which right, was perfect. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's perfect. You want to do it through different, different, um, you yeah. know, different mediums. Yeah. Not a problem. But to only say you have to read the book to know. Right. Why? <laughs> Why? That's so stupid. Like to me, the fact that, the fact, and this is one thing I've always been upset about, um, with with George Lucas, the fact that we've never seen someone take a crystal and insert it into a lightsaber to see how the mechanics of that work. Mm-hmm. Or AJ, like I've told you a million times, the fact that I've never seen someone in live action bleed a crystal mm-hmm. will forever anger me. Will always anger me. Yeah. Why? That's the mo- that's the dopest thing to me in Star Wars. The idea that you could take a crystal that's already blue and bleed it into becoming red. Why wouldn't you show that? Yeah. Why wouldn't you show that? <laughs> that's like saying hey did you know that uh iron man can turn into a suit without actually having to step into it <laughs> oh dope like where can i see that oh it's in the books the books <laughs> are you gonna put it in the movie no nope. wait what? what that's not something you make someone have to visualize you show them that you know what i'm saying like you can visualize how someone felt sure no problem a cool dope scene like that and you want me to imagine it rather than seeing it yeah star wars is insane with that <laughs> they're really bonkers with the notion of that um but i want to go into this joe i want to go into because me and aj talked about this a little bit a few weeks ago i want to know what out of the shows are you looking forward to the most uh i know acolyte is really high for me and aj yeah like, no i we uh we talked about this on the last stream i actually said the acolyte that's, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's actually one of my uh one of my top ones that I'm anticipating is that one. I mean, of course, Obi Wan, obviously. I mean, not only because Anakin's come, uh, Hayden Christensen's going to come back, but uh, you know, Obi Wan is, if not Vader, Luke, or or Anakin, Obi Wan is a, the one of the biggest characters you know in Star Wars. Right. So, um, Obi Wan just seems like it's the easy answer. But out of things that I really don't know about personally, the Alkali definitely is uh, number one for me. Because with them saying, well, not them, I don't know if they said it. I don't know if Kathleen said it or not. But I think the rumor is it's about a, uh, it's a Mm -hmm. female-led Sith. And it's like, okay, you know, no problem. I don't care. To me, I I know who I would like it to be. Was it Talos? Is it Talos? Yeah. She has like the the ears like um, that go back. Darth Talos. No, 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 no. I'm asking. Is the is is there a Sith Lord named Talos? She's like, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I if it's not her, I'll be very disappointed. I want it to be her. I want it to be about her because she was brutal. Brutal. Now you obviously have to retcon some stuff because she was Knights of the Old Republic. Um, but to me, it doesn't matter. Who cares? Yeah. Bring her into this. Like Knights of the Old Republic, you have Revan, you have Malgus. You don't really need like this whole ensemble of big name Sith users. Mm-hmm. You just need two, two really big ones. And I think Malgus and I think um, I just said his name and I completely forgot. Uh, Revan. Revan, yes, that's all you need. And you could even hell, you could bring in Nihilus. You know, you could even make Nihilus a woman. I don't care because the mask is. I I don't care. But Darth, she has to be in this show. And if they give it to someone else, I'll just have to wait to see who that is. But yes, like I said, AJ, if Plagueis isn't in it, I am not interested. Yeah, oh yeah. I I'm agree. Just really not interested. I'm sorry. It's, it's a timeline that he exists in. Yeah. It's like, you know what it reminds me of, AJ? It would be like if at the end of The Mandalorian season two, if Cal Kestis showed up, you would go, wait, 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 wait. hold on. Grogu reached out in the timeline where the only most powerful Jedi alive is Luke. And you're telling me the message went past Luke and went to Kyle Kestis? <laughs> Dog, come on. Luke is right there. He should be the only one you bring in here. And it's why it caught everybody off guard. It made fans cry. I'm crying 4 o'clock in the damn morning. So, <laughs> like, to know that Plagueis is alive during this time and easily the most powerful Sith user. Mm-hmm. 
and you don't even mention him, show him, I'd have a very big problem with that. It would make absolutely no sense. Why? Why would you skip that? So that's because I know AJ Aiden is like, you're, you are going to watch it. If Plagueis is not in it, AJ, I'm not watching it. You're, you're I just, I just, once that trailer comes out, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm watching this. No, because you know why? You know why? Plagueis will, Plagueis, if he's not in this show, he will turn into my new Mephisto. He will turn into, you are just blatantly ignoring the most important characters out of these arcs. You are just blatantly doing it. Why? Like at that point, AJ, I'll start taking this shit personal. Like I'll start thinking they hear our shows and they're like, oh, you want Plagueis? You'll never get them. Yeah. Read the books. <laughs> Go read the books. Go read your books. Um, AJ, so it's still Acolyte for you also? I don't know anymore, actually. It's either it's between the Acolytes or well, no, actually it's Ahsoka, but other than Ahsoka, it's between the Acolytes and um uh what's the I can't remember it now. It's the animated one. The animated one. Hold on. I, I can't it's with um all the different animations from Japanese animations. Oh yes, yes, yes. Like an anime, an anime, um yeah. an anime Jedi show or whatever. Yeah, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kathleen did say that in in her um in her uh in her showcase. Yeah, I am interested in that. Interested that's in what it is. Things. No, it's not visions. Is it visions? No, no, not visions. But that's animated too. That is animated, yeah. But it, visions isn't the one. Um all right, so before we get into um Ewan McGregor's comments about the Kenobi show that sent people in a in a, in a tizzy. I want to ask you this, Joe. I already know how me and AJ feel about this. We're not even going to respond. I just want your take, and then we're going to move on to Kenobi. Our amazing uh, uh, contributor, well, not contributor, our amazing um, controller of Twitter, Kanan, put out a question. Who would win Luke versus Ahsoka, right? Now, I'm going to just tell you my stance, AJ's stance, and then you'll give your opinion and we'll move on. We're not going to argue this, AJ. <laughs> right. So I said it would be a wash. Luke ultimately turned into Neo to where he became essentially the greatest user of the Force in that moment, uh, in that timeline. So it's just it's like Luke at his apex versus Ahsoka at whatever apex you want to put her at. Doesn't matter. Um, so I said it would be a wash. Luke would wash her. Now, how quick he does it, doesn't matter. AJ believes it would be a very, very good battle to where who knows who could win, right? Now, how do you view that, Joe? Uh, I mean, I was thinking right away, uh, uh, same way you are, about it being a wash. But now I'm thinking about it. I think, I don't think it would be a quick win. I still think Luke wins. Uh, I don't think it would be a quick victory. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be a huge battle either. I don't see an Anakin versus Obi-Wan like battle between the two. I don't think something that drawn out. I don't, uh, how is Ahsoka's force abilities? Obviously she can handle a saber, but how is the force abilities? It was, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, AJ. You're Ahsoka's number one fan. Go ahead. Okay. So I do agree with, um, not Kane, goodness, Juwan on this. <laughs> Luke is a better force wielder, a strong, I wouldn't even say that, is a stronger force wielder than Ahsoka, by far. I do agree with that. Um, but the thing that I was so hard on, on looking at is Ahsoka has been with Anakin for a long time and has been keeping up with Anakin for the longest time. And I feel like her movability is much better than Luke's. Because at this time, he had much of a challenge. Um, sure, he versed um, Vader, but technically, he didn't really win. Um, Time, out. Time out, though. Really, just really quickly, really quickly. And this isn't even to argue anything. We forget he was within seconds of killing Vader on his own. But the only reason he didn't is because it would have taken him into the path of the dark side. But let's not get it twisted. He very easily, and this is this isn't with Palpatine doing any force lightning or anything. This is one on one Luke versus Vader. Vader mm -hmm. not at his apex, but Vader at a very high level. But Vader at a level that would easily kill anybody else. Luke was within seconds of taking his life 
but realize he would become his father mm-hmm. if he did. Yeah, he yeah, this, isn't, this isn't me to argue it. I'm just, I'm just saying he almost no. killed Vader by himself. Yeah, that, right. That's fair, but right. Vader did have a double debuff on that as well with like no. not not trying to kill him at the same time because he was trying to recruit him in there for sure and, and not being at the strongest anyway as well like you said but yeah it, it was a tough it was tough for me to decide which one because we all know that luke is the strongest force wielder right now but for me i feel like ahsoka is like the better the best lightsaber wielder of at this point in time because of all of her how what is it? All of her training with Anakin, because Luke really didn't finish his training. He he, I'm I'm sure that he did finish his training with texts and like stuff in the library stuff stuff, mm-hmm. but he didn't really have like a master to help him finish his training, unlike Ahsoka. But that that was just me. No, 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 no. And that's why I said this isn't this isn't us arguing any yeah. points. I just wanted I wanted Joe to hear your side because you are a huge Ahsoka fan. Um, so that's I, I, why I, I said yeah. that's why I quickly went to force wielding. I wanted to know what her force powers were because I agree. I think what it come, if it came down to just a saber match, mm-hmm. Luke is a very stiff saber user. I mean, he really sure. doesn't have saber skills, not like Anakin did. For sure. So uh, that's where his strong suit's not. But I still think because he's so strong in the force, I still give I give him the W. I, I think Ahsoka is more creative with the force, whereas Luke is stronger with the. He's force. just stronger overall. Yeah. It's just yeah. like it's. I compare Luke to this. Luke is as strong with the force as Windu was with the lightsaber. So it's like, if you ask who would win in a lightsaber battle, Ahsoka or Windu, Windu very easily because he is a master swordsman. He, he is the greatest swordsman. Right. Ever. Luke is, I think a master force user, as far as the Jedi's go. Um, we haven't seen power like that. And we know it's not Canon uh, Canon. Sorry, but we haven't seen raw power like that since star killer right. to where it's just, you're not the greatest swordsman, but your strength in the force is just so overwhelmingly huge mm-hmm. that it, it just sets you far none above everybody. The, the strongest but, thing Ahsoka has with using the force is holding a cruiser and season seven of Clone Wars. Yeah, that, that that's her strongest. I think that's her strongest feat while using the force. Yeah. That's why I think. That's why I think Lucasfilms doesn't want Star Killer to be canon. <laughs> because no one's ever had a feat bigger than that. Yeah, he brought a whole Star Destroyer down. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, technically, the the destroyer was already in the cra- gravitational pull. Time out, AJ. Let me just say this because you're not wrong, but you point out someone that you think could have just held it. Just Darth Vader could have held, huh? held it. Fair. Okay. I give you Vader. I give Palpatine could have held it. Uh, no, I don't know if Palpatine. Yeah, Pal- Palpatine was able to create storms by himself. Like, he he could manipulate weather. I think that, I'm pretty sure he even destroyed the world by just using the force. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to look you at know- it. You know, Palpatine with me is, is I view Palpatine the same way I've always uh, viewed Sentry from Marvel. He's just ridiculously OP to the point to where it's just like. No, no disagreements. Like, come on, man. Is he Superman? Like, every time you think you have Palpatine, they give you this new ability or this new thing Palpatine's able to do. And it's like, dude, how do you keep stacking the decks? What like, was the name dude, of the Sith that can destroy planets? Nihilus. Nihilus. Yeah. It is Nihilus, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So I mean, again, you know, and, and I, you know, you know what I think set me off, AJ. I think what set me off was people's response, and that's why I didn't say anything else. People's responses to why they thought Ahsoka could beat Luke. Someone going, "Well, Ahsoka held her own against Maul," and I'm like, "That's your gauge. Your gauge is, oh, you didn't die to Maul. What? Luke would wash Maul. Like that, I think it made don't compare it to Vader." <laughs> I think it would have made, made more sense that they right, said. right, right. And time out, AJ. What would have made that more impressive is that was Vader going into his apex prime. Mm-hmm. So that was a very young, early on Vader. That wasn't the old Vader that Luke fought. So that would have been like, oh damn, Juwan, you got shut up. Like Ahsoka held her own against Vader, even though to be fair, if you're gonna say <laughs> exactly, Vader was still holding back because that Vader would have watched Ahsoka <laughs> if he if if Ahsoka had on a mask and he didn't know who she was he would have ripped through her and, and 
I said this the other day in someone asked me and I want you two to correct me. Um, I said Vader very much because a lot of people thought like, oh, Vader would land on a planet, kill a Jedi. And I said, well, as far as Filoni's been showing showcasing Vader to us, he's very much he likes to play with his food before he eats it. Mm-hmm. He could have killed Ezra. He could have killed Kanan. He could have killed Ahsoka. Um, well, Ahsoka, we know, was an emotional attachment. But as far as Ezra, he was toying with Ezra. He was toying with Cal Kestis. He could have easily killed all these Jedi. Yeah. So Vader was not a, I'm going to just land on a planet and just, I'm going to kill everybody and so I can go home. You know, He was a hunter, hunter. basically. He, he liked to he liked hunt. He liked exactly. Hunt. So I think people assume Vader was very much the, I landed on the planet, wiped out 90 Jedi in five seconds, and then I went home. No, he liked to play with some of his, especially when he sensed raw potential in whoever he was going up against. We know how powerful Cal Kessis was becoming in the game. We know how powerful Ezra is supposed to be. Uh, we know how powerful Ahsoka is. So, yeah, he would toy with his food. You know, not often, but, you know, when he felt as though it was needed. Uh, Cal, Cal probably yeah. would have died if it wasn't for uh, what's-a-face stepping in. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Because Vader probably... was getting annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> he was he was just yeah. like, all right, you know what? I tried. I tried to let you live, but now I got to kill you. But I agree. He does, uh, yeah, he doesn't kill them right away. He does want a challenge. I mean, because think about this. If you're Vader, and within the first five years, you're just wiping through the galaxy's Jedi, you do, when you come across a Jedi that's really strong, you do kind of want to savor it a little bit. A little bit, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you get that nice paycheck and you you splurge on dinner, you don't want to eat your dinner in five minutes. You want to nope. savor it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like to devour my <laughs> Oh my! Yeah. AJ would be the guy spend a hundred on a dinner and eat it in two seconds. Like, yeah. what? Uh-huh. <laughs> how often are you gonna spend a hundred dollars on food to be just eating it like that? Um, but go. yeah, so Vader very much. So okay, so we all have Luke winning, but yeah, you know, yeah. ultimately we do think Ahsoka would be one of the better people Luke could go up against. I think a better yeah. versus would be Luke and Luke and Ahsoka versus Darth Vader. Because Darth Vader isn't really the best lightsaber wielder out there. It's not, but again, yeah, it's to be a- honest, I feel like Ahsoka yeah. is better than Vader. And- Vader doesn't need to be really. He doesn't. It's the Force. The Force yeah. is so strong in him. That that's why that's why he plays with his he plays with his food because he he tries to he tries to battle with lightsaber, but once he's like, okay, I'm done with this, he just throws away his lightsaber, uses the Force, he's like, that's okay. it. That's like the day Vader realized I could just force choke everybody to death was one of the greatest days for Vader ever. Because it was just like, do I even need to remove my lightsaber for this? I don't think I do. Let me see. No, nope, I don't. <laughs> now, was the first person he ever force choked Padme? No. No. Really? No. Because in Revenge of the Sith, he force choked the um little fat aliens that were on that planet, like the fat the fat politicians. He I did. Think he first shook one of those guys. I think. I think. I think he just chopped them down with the saber. You are talking about Newt Gunray and um, Vice uh, Viceroy, whatever it is? Yeah, I, I think. I think he. He just shook one of them. I probably. thought he just sliced through them. That would be sick as hell if, if Padme. I'm pretty sure Padme is his force. Uh, his first force choke. Can you picture how sadistic that is? Like, oh my god, this works. Okay, all right. Yeah. I have to go back to this. <laughs> like, I like. I it. could be wrong. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it because, yeah, even like even in Attack of the Clones, when he went through the sand people, he just chopped them down. Yeah. I don't think he ever used force choking until that. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's as relevant as Luke using um force crush in Mandalorian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be fair, it doesn't really count because they're robots. Not really. No, 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 no. I'm not speaking against the fact that that's oh, okay. that's that's unruly. I'm saying I think that was one of his first times doing it. Yeah, because well, a lot of people were, oh, that's not what a Jedi does. It's Sith. No, he was. It was a. It was a robot. It was a robot. But yeah. they're right. That is not what Jedi did. No, okay. Jedi's don't do that. Uh, Mace Windu did it and and could have gotten in trouble, but I, I don't think anyone was was gonna argue with Mace. When he did it, to, <laughs> when he did it to Grievous, he very much should have gotten in trouble for that. That was a beating heart that he crushed, and that's why poor Grievous had had the asthma for the. Or did he know? Well. Did he know he had a beating heart? Did he know he had a beating heart? If you're telling me that with the Force you can sense me running up behind you, 
you can't tell me you didn't sense a heart beating in there. Maybe he just chose to ignore it. Maybe just, yeah. that, that, that's that's something different for sure. That's something different. Um, a lot of people like to um, flirt with the idea of Mace playing around with the dark side because in order to become strong in force lightning deflection, you had to have gone up against force lightning uh, enough times. Um, so a lot of people like to believe the idea that Mace Windu has toyed with the idea of the dark side. Unless you're Ray. Unless you're Ray and you just luck into every possible thing you do. You luck into using a lightsaber. You luck into using the force. You luck into force lightning. And it's just like <sighs> Oh I, look, hold on. I, I can I can uh, I can heal this worm. I, I read this in a book. Right. And, and you know you know what upset me about well, that's that? how most of them learn. That's how Luke learned. Do you um read it from a book? No, 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 no. But what, yeah. what I don't Did like you know? is what I don't like is I feel as though um, George Lucas has always been very much of the concept of either having to earn it or it being something you do in the most desperate of situations. And I kind of feel like a lot of Rays was just like, I just so happened to be able to be really good at this. Well, the like force lightning thing was a de desperate situation for her. I'm not even talking about that, AJ. Yeah, you're right. Let me ask you this. The movie starts with Ray being an amazing pilot, right? But Ray yeah. also mentions to us that she's never left that fucking planet. Mm -hmm. So where the fuck has she flown to before that she's this amazing pilot? Just flown from place to place in that one planet. Much it's, like it's, Anakin. It's all much desert. Like what is, what is place to place? Much, much like Anakin did in Empire. Not Empire, my goodness. Um, Phantom Menace. That's like putting a 15-year-old behind a Hummer and them just being amazing at it. And you're just like, how are you amazing at driving this? Anakin machine? did it. Anakin did it. But Anakin was the chosen. AJ, he was born through midichlorians. He's not normal. So I, I understand. Yeah, and, and Ray was born through um, Palpatine. Yeah. What's the difference? We came to find that out. Oh. Yes. Oh, I, oh. I, I'm not going to disagree with that. That was done poorly, but it was done. <laughs> <laughs> it was done poorly for sure. Were you going to touch up on any rumors? Because I didn't want to. I didn't want to skip anything, or I, I didn't want to go to something. No, lead into it. Go ahead. I read a rumor about something. Not a rumor. I'm sorry. A theory. I don't know. Rumor is the wrong word. I'm sorry. I read a theory today. It's about the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. And there's a theory going on the internet. I actually read it on Screen Rant. I don't know if you guys seen this. No, I didn't see it. Go ahead. All right. So uh, basically, this theory says they feel that Din Djarin of the Mandalorian is actually going to die sacrificing himself, saving Grogu from Kylo Ren. Because obviously now with Luke training Grogu now, we it could lead to at one point, not saying season three, but it could lead to at one point them coming to the part where Luke is building the you know the a new Jedi temple, training new students, Ben Solo being one of them. Unfortunately, I debunked this. Oh, you did? I debunked this a lot. Not that theory. Okay. The theory of Kylo Ren, because people keep forgetting right now, right where the Mandalorian season two ends, yeah. Kylo Ren's nine years old. Right. So we're talking five, right. not right. even no, five, eight. It definitely eight, wouldn't eight, be season three, but I don't know. See, I get the, the thing is, too, they don't really say when they're talking about it. So I don't think they mean season three, because I, I, you're right. Kylo's still, be, Ben's still a baby, basically. He's have, nine. Right. It would have to be that they make a time jump. Right. Not a, not a large one, but a significant one that we can go, okay, enough time has passed. He was yeah. nine during season one and two. This takes place three or four years later, maybe. But I think the whole purpose of bringing in Grogu and having him be trained by Luke is the idea of Grogu could have left before Luke even started up the... Yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, what, whatever. So it's the idea of that. I mean, it's it's cool. I mean, we could see... Din sacrificing himself for Grogu uh, at a later time. Grogu comes back to Din and, you know, someone's trying to kill him. I just, I, I wouldn't expect us getting any Kylo Ren w when it comes to the Mandalorian. I don't know how interested anybody is over at Lucasfilms with connecting to those three movies anytime. Also, soon. Kylo Ren didn't really kill any Jedi while he was leaving. That is a misconception. The, uh, it accidentally caught on fire. Yeah. Not, he didn't do it on purpose and they died by the fire. So he didn't actually just go through and just start stabbing people to death either. Um, so that's he, just, yeah. he actually ran away technically, right? Because there right. were three other Jedi that were 
or I should say Padawans. So what was that force vision? Back. What was that force back vision that Ray ultimately saw with him and the Knights of Ren? Now, again, that wasn't the time because he was already establishing he had the Knights of Ren with him. Right. But there were bodies all over the place. What they, was that? They, they butchered it because they butchered it because in the book, um, he was getting thoughts of the dark side, um, but it caught fire. I don't remember how it caught fire. I'm depending on AJ for that. It was, I'm pretty sure it was Snoke that caused that to happen. Right. So it it, it caught fire. He ran away, ultimately leaving them to die. So he still pulled the dick move, leaving them to die. But yeah, what the movie did was different than what the book did. The book did it way better. It made way more sense of this kid who's just terrified. Um, And it's the idea of him isolating himself from Luke, isolating himself from his parents, Mm -hmm. taking on Snoke. But the dopest thing about Kylo's upbringing was the fact that Kylo Ren, the, the the name Ren is not something he made up. It existed. Right. Yeah. There are already warriors of Ren. He had killed them to take the mantle of Ren um, to become Kylo Ren. So that to me is what was super dope. That the and movie they were was- not like a cult, but they were like a they were uh, not not religious group either. But they were like fascinated or uh, uh, obsessed with Sith art- artifacts, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Right, AJ. I'm sorry, what? I the think Knights that was the Ren, war uh, The Knights of Ren, before Kylo adapted them, they were addi- not addicted, I'm sorry, obsessed with Sith artifacts and stuff. Right, that's what yeah, they would do. Yeah, they yeah, would yeah. go yep. and search for these uh, Sith artifacts. Yeah, so the everyone, because again, this is why, what did, we, what did we just finish saying? Stop putting it in the books. Put it in the movie. No one All read the good the ideas book. are in the books, so. though. <laughs> right, no one read the books, so everyone thinks what Kylo did in the movie is what actually happened and it's not. They retconned it for reasons I still don't understand. Because you can say that he ran away, and it still has the same effect. He left him to die. Whether he killed him or left him to die, it's still the same thing. They died. So you, to me, you can argue that that someone else probably killed him before the lightning stroke strike strikes. Goodness, um, maybe Snoke, because Snoke was on on the planet as well. Um, right training training and helping Luke as well. So there there could be some type of way that they can introduce that in there. But they could have done it better than they than they did. They just could have the movie yeah. could have done it better. It was it was too vague in the movies. It was too Fair. vague. Well. All right. The last little bit of news, unless you guys got anything else, the last little bit of news is Obi Wan was on one of the late night shows and said that he shot a very special scene on may the fourth be with you mm-hmm. and it was so it, it, i'm paraphrasing here so if you guys know the actual quote please chime in uh but he worked with somebody that he had always wanted to work with you know essentially the same thing fucking paul bettany said yeah only for it to turn out to be paul bettany uh <laughs> so hopefully this isn't black obi-wan <laughs> as opposed to white obi-wan um that how how hilarious would that be <laughs> he, he turns around and it's a black obi-wan and it's, it's samuel jack i'm predicting right. it's mace windu i'm predicting it's mace windu oh you think it's mace windu? i'm yep i'm predicting this mace windu okay i mean look mace windu is one of is one of star wars best kept secrets we have no idea what the hell happened to mace windu it's why when you know jj abrams completely swerved this with making it seem like finn was the jedi in force awakens through the trailers um i very much wanted him to be mace windu's son because i thought they would never evaluate mace windu so i'm like i I like a lineage story so when it turned out it was ray that was a jedi i was just like okay what (laughs) like why even set any of that up? So, okay, so you think it's Mace Windu. So, okay, so this goes into my question. Joe, who do you think is the person that uh, that um, Ewan McGregor is referring to that he got to work with? And he said this is somebody he always wanted to work with, right? Right. Yeah. Implying that he never did. Oh, then yeah. Shut up, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. I forgot that. Yes. yes. No, that would be yes. that would be awesome, though. That would be a great, that would be awesome. Yeah, the, to, you know, to have Samuel Jackson there uh, reprising his role as uh, Mace Windu, finally getting him live on screen. I thought it was going to be something as simple as one of his kids. Honestly, right? Doesn't it, you and you and McGregor is a dad? No. Yeah. Yep. Maybe he's, maybe one of his kids has a, has a role. That's, that's, the, that's the only thing I thought of. I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it this time because we did it with Paul Bettany. 
Exactly what we did. So everybody's going to, you know, oh, it's Mephisto. It's got to be Mephisto. No. Um, to be I fair, think- Star Wars did deliver on their promises, to be fair. They yeah, no, they did. Oh, Mandalorian, yeah, they especially do. Mandalorian and, season two. They did. And I will say this: you and McGregor did did uh, does always say he was raised never to lie. Like he he doesn't lie. So if he says something, it's the truth. Yeah. But he was very vague. He was and vague in it. Yeah. Said, it could right. mean it could be anything. Yeah. Could mean anything. So I that's what I honestly that's what I immediately thought of. I thought it'd be cool that maybe he has again. I really don't know if he has a boy or he has a girl. How old they are, but I thought it would be cool and that maybe that's what he was talking about. Something he just filmed the scene with one of his kids. It's very possible. Gail Gadot uh, uh, got a chance to have her husband and her kids in Wonder Woman 1984. It's the last scene when they're in the snow. Yeah. Uh, and she looks over at the cart of the kids. Those are her kids. Yes. And Tom Holland just got to shoot with his little brother in yep. Spider-Man um, No Way Home or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. So, yeah, it could be something as simple as that. I took it as Vader. Obi-Wan. Is never that Ewan McGregor's Obi Wan is never encountered uh, Darth Vader. Yes, I thought maybe maybe it's a combination of what's his name J- James Earl Jones's voice as Darth Vader. So you know, getting to meet him and then you know actually going up against Darth Vader. That's what I took it as. I, I know it sounds stupid, but I'm not reaching for anything like I usually do. I'm just not. I that's not a reach though. To be honest with you, I didn't think of that. Because I thought of I, I I immediately thought of Hayden, and I was like, "But he already all right. He already worked with Hayden." Mm-hmm. Um, I because I didn't think of Hayden in the suit, right? And yeah, I didn't. I honestly did not think that. So it's possible, or that's cool, yeah. Or we don't know. It could be Rosario Dawson's Ahsoka. Yeah. It could be Rosario. Well, has he ever worked with um, Liam Neeson? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's a menace. It's the first I movie. Remember. I can't remember. I can never yes. remember. Okay. Yeah. This is the one I choose to ignore. <laughs> well, he's been, I'll tell you this. He's been Obi-Wan from, from the jump. So from, from uh Phantom Menace all the way yeah. to now, he's been the him Obi-Wan. And, uh him and Liam Neeson tag team mall. Yeah. I don't know how you forget that. <laughs> I, I really don't know how you forget that. I honestly look. I not I, to get too far. I I don't really have that much of a problem with Phantom Menace. I really don't think I it's don't a have better any movie. Problems with Phantom Menace outside I of it. over oh. an overuse of Jar Jar Banks. Outside of that, I don't have any problem with that. No, Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. We got a different story. I hated that. Yeah. Um, but especially <laughs> when Dave Filoni broke down the importance of Duel of Fates. It's just like yes, this movie. Yeah, this movie makes a whole lot more sense now. I like it. I really do. If it has to be explained to you, no. No, 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 no. What he was explaining wasn't something that like you could infer from the movie. It was it was a deeper meaning to why George named it Duel of Fates, what what you know, what it meant to Anakin's life. It was like essentially the idea of in that moment, it was a fight for the life of Anakin. If Qui-Gon lives, Anakin probably takes a different uh, trajectory on life the fact that he died we saw the trajectory that he took so it was legit a fight for uh the life of anakin so like i'm like yeah that's deep as hell i get it i yeah. get it um but if you ask me what, what was what had what had cooler scenes in it phantom menace or attack of the clones i'll always go phantom menace when the doors open and vader and not vader i'm sorry um maul is standing there that is so badass. I yeah. love that scene. I'll rewatch it tonight. I'll, yeah. I'll no, it's Attack uh, one of, of the things. clones. The only cool thing from Attack of the Clones is the idea that again, in another scenario, the war could have ended. Legit, legit. Dooku's just like, hey, I know who like Palpatine is. I mean, I I, I know who Sidious is. If if you want to know, no one's like, I don't believe you. And it's like, huh? Well, okay. Can't shit. be trusted. Okay. He was gonna. T- and the thing <laughs> like, is, that's funny. He was right? he was telling him the truth. I always everything. hated that scene. Him everything that scene always annoyed the shit out of me. I'm like, dude, like he was kind of telling you the truth. He was telling you everything, which was cool because I didn't know I didn't know his play there. I was like, wait, is he a double agent? What is he doing here? Because- I think in that moment, I think in that moment, Dooku, because depending on where you line it up with Clone Wars, I don't know how far how far away that moment is from when Dooku had to had to kill uh, Asajj, and that bothered him a lot. It did, because in his mind, he did want to train Asajj to where one day maybe they could overthrow Palpatine 
and and you know he take over. So it was the idea of you know him not really fucking with Palpatine like that. So to me, it was the idea of like Obi Wan, listen, you want him? Look, he's right there, he's right there, right there. And Obi Wan was just like, no, I don't believe you. And he's just like, okay, sure. I mean, all right, you're about to die anyway, so who cares? My uh, um, my the, favorite scene in Attack of the Clones will always be Anakin going to get his mother. Always will be hands down. Just him, his confrontation with the uh, Owen, you know, that becomes Uncle Owen. His confrontation, he's like, "Where you going? I'm going to get my, I'm going to get my mother." Right. And him just going there and then slaughtering and doing whatever he's doing, just becoming part of the dark side. That's what that was hands down my favorite. I mean, it was cool also too at the end with to see all the Jedi uh, come together and then of course Yoda coming down with the the, the clone army, but. It was, you know, it was a little, that was also very overwhelming. There's a, there was a lot going on, uh, on on the screen at once. But hands down for me, Anakin going to get his mother was, you know, and plus it was a powerful scene, holding his mother, watching her die. I respect yeah. your love for the prequels. I respect your love for the prequels. I yeah. just can't get into it. No, I hear, no, but hear me. I'm also in the same breath. I will tell you, I'm not a prequels fan. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I mean, as far as the prequels go, uh, Revenge of the Sith is my favorite. Uh, I just can't hate on Phantom Menace. Attack of the Clones is is my lowest on my ranking. Attack of the Clones is there. But other than that, yeah, I, I've said before, I've said this on uh, the stream that we had last time for uh, May 4th. Mm-hmm. I felt that there were major issues with the prequels, you know, from the CGI to the direction to the acting. It was, and I, again, I love Natalie Portman. I love Hayden Christensen. I don't fault the actors. You know, I, I still don't understand the, the, the hate that Ahmad Best got for being Jar Jar. That wasn't his fault. Right. That Lucas made a, a retard. It was just a bad character. Like, what were you thinking? <laughs> what were you thinking? But other than that, yeah, I mean, it's still Star Wars. I'm still going to watch it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I'll never apologize for my love of, of the yeah. prequels. Not all things prequels, but of the prequels. I, I don't care. I will take this to my, my, my deathbed. My children will, will grow up thinking this. Revenge of the Sith is the best Star Wars movie. I'll never feel any different than that. I won't. I won't argue any anybody else's point. Yeah, not you, a you shouldn't have to apologize for something not like a that. Problem. Star Wars is very easily. A, it's a generational thing. Yeah. It is. For People sure. that are older tend to lean towards you know what they're used to, what they've watched growing up. Prequels are what people now grew up watching, and sequel trilogy is for the ne- for the next generation. So there are. I just, it's, it's for it's for everybody. It really is. I, I to me, I just I don't like to get in debates like that because I sometimes feel like people just say that because it's like the cool thing to say. It's like when someone asks you who's your favorite Batman, everyone always assumes the default has to be Michael Keaton. No, I don't, I don't, I don't ever apply. You don't that. know what's Ben Affleck. There you go. You know that's mine. And, and I grew up with the the VHSs of Michael Keaton's Batman. So did I. So I'm like, I get it, but I think we've just grown to where it's such a you have to say that kind of mentality. That I, I don't ever defend it. Like what you guys saw me getting destroyed trying to defend Revenge of the Sith on our on, on our uh May the Pod be with you. You had you had <laughs> Ash protecting you over there. <laughs> hey, look, look, Ash has good taste. What do you want from me? But I'll never I'll never feel as though it's something I have to defend because to me, that is what Star Wars is. And if someone believes Return of the Jedi or Empire Strikes Back is what Star Wars is. Not a problem. I don't think those movies are bad. I think I think they're a bit overrated. I think sometimes people speak of those movies as if they are just the most flawless pieces of film ever. I don't do that. That is the most flawless pieces. I would have to disagree with you a little bit there. So you think Empire Strikes Back is flawless? No, I not flaw, not flawless, but it's actually pretty damn near perfect. It really is from a story point of view, from the just from everything about it, but also at the same time, it's it's again. And I said this too on the, on the made the pod pro, uh, uh, what do you call it podcast. Mm-hmm. It literally gave us the one of the best scenes in not only Star Wars history but cinematic history in in the tell of Darth Vader being Luke's father. You know that was I mean it's just iconic. It's, it's too iconic to me. To yeah. be, it's just hard for me being a huge fan of Empire Strikes Back. And again, and I even said this on uh, the May the Fourth podcast that growing up, Return of the Jedi was my favorite Star Wars movie. It wasn't until I got older that I actually got more sympathetic to 
not only Vader's character, but the dark side of Star Wars. But to me, it's just, it's so hard to visualize Empire not being on everybody's top list. You know, and then that's not to say that Reve- that everybody has to, that's got to be everybody's favorite. Revenge of the Sith is horrible. No, of course not, because I think it's a great film. But it, Empire Strikes Back is actually pretty damn near perfect as a film. It really is. Not just as Star Wars, I'm talking about as a film itself. So that's why it's really hard. Again, as no film, film is flawless. As a film itself, I can get. The writer in me, I can get that. The film buff in me, I can get that. Not a problem. As Star Wars goes, I could still point out ways that I think Revenge of the Sith is just better as a Star Wars movie, not as a movie in its totality, just as a Star Wars movie. You know, it's like arguing Avengers versus Avengers Endgame. You right. know what I'm saying? The beginning versus the end. So to me, it's it, it's the idea of that. But to me, like I said, I always love what Hayden Christensen did as Anakin and Revenge of the Sith because it's such a... It's such a fun journey he takes you on. I get it, the whininess of Attack of the Clones. I get it. I hated it, too. I didn't understand why he had to be a grown-ass baby. Yeah. Um, but he, he retcons it so well with Revenge of the Sith. The anger, the not knowing, the passion, um, and then just the pure rage. I loved it. I, I honestly loved it. So, to me, I adore it. I'll always adore it. Um, Joe, before you hop off on, on the second part of this, yeah, I do want to ask you, because you have seen the first episode yeah. of The Bad Batch as we head into our Bad Batch review. I do want to know your thoughts on this, this first episode. I feel like we said it maybe on Made the Pod Be With You. Yeah. Um, so you still only got past the one. or you've Yeah, I started it. watching the second one. I had to stop because I actually had to run to the store. I had to do something and I never, I just never revisited it. It's, and again, it's not because I'm not, I'm not liking it. Uh, I also find it hard. Now, here's another thing, too. I literally just started watching a few days ago, Invincible. I'm late to the show. Mm -hmm. So and I'm, I think, four or five episodes in, but I stopped. And again, it's not because I don't like the show. It's because lately my um, my focus hasn't been where it should be when it comes to I'm all over the place. I can't watch sit down and watch a movie like now or a show right now. But um, as far as what I've seen in the first episode of The Bad Batch, I liked it. I really did. You know, it was it was long, but it was needed to be long because it was the first episode. And I do realize that I've seen, like I was telling you before we went on, that every episode here on after had been less and less. Right. And I think the last episode was like 23 minutes or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's not something that I'm not going to not watch. You know, it is Star Wars. And especially since you've said that it is part of a world building thing that Filoni's doing. Um you know, and it's funny because I actually forgot that I even I that I got to see Bad Batch even before the the series started from right. from uh you know the the Clone Wars. Yep. Yeah. So uh, they that completely jogged my memory when we were talking about it on uh, on May fourth. But um yeah no I I'm definitely gonna get on it. I do I am. Yeah. Yes, I like please, it. I did. Please do, and especially if you catch up before you know as we're going forward, let me know as you catch up so you can come back and join yeah. us on this. Yeah, I want to do that on these bad batch reviews. Yeah. Um, before you go, Joe, uh, please do plug your YouTube channel. All right. Just your average Joe, as it's listed right there, right below me, uh, right below my body, a uh, small little YouTube channel. I, I appreciate the, uh, the support in, in any way, uh, you know, doing Marvel star Wars. I mean, we do a whole bunch of other movies, you know, and you know, I've been doing the mighty ducks as well uh, yeah. to cover that Disney plus lull until we finally get Loki. But, you know, and I was doing the Falcon and Winter soldier, uh, just little quick reviews I do uh, each weekend and other stuff, you know, uh, other stuff like that. Absolutely. And, and we, will, we will find ways to get Joe a part of the MCR um, to talk Loki with this. Uh, Can't wait for that. Yeah. I'm just, I'm telling you guys the edit that me and Dakota are putting together for this Loki series when it comes back, the welcome back video that we're making for you guys. Also, it's going to be, Mind blowing. I now they pushed it forward, right? When is the when's the new release date? It's, it's I think it's next week. No, June 9th. June 9th. Yeah, June 9th. June 9th. That's so great. It, it's only a few days ahead of that is where great. It was already at. So it was originally the eleventh and it's now just the ninth. So okay. I, I don't Oh, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know it was now on Fridays anymore. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. It was the weirdest thing. Just push it back to Friday. Like yeah. why? We, we had a thing going every Saturday. Now people are going to expect it before Saturday. It's like, well, I, I, uh, anyway. 
Um, all right, Joe. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Anytime, Happy I appreciate to have it. you on again. Um, sure. make sure you guys check out his YouTube channel. Uh, like I said, I just checked out the most uh, most recent episode. Make sure you guys do too. Like, comment, and subscribe, and show Joe some lo- show Joe some love over there. Uh, I appreciate thank it. Thank you again, Joe. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, take care. Guys. Absolutely. I'll see you. See you guys soon. Take care, Joe. All right. Bye. All right, AJ. So we can get into the recent episode of the bad, the bad. terrible bad. Yes. All right. So I want you to I want you to kick it off, man. You weren't really loving this episode. What, what was going on with you, man? I gave it a B. I like this episode. A you B. Made it, a you B. made it sound like I gave it like an F minus. Because it's like, why? How did you give it a B? It was an A of an episode. What didn't you like? Look. I, I'll go to the things that I did like. I like all of the action that was in it. I thought that was really cool to see all of that. I did I did love to see Fennec in action. I love the way they introduced her in the Bat Batch and all of that. But just, I was not much of a fan because it really didn't develop anything, really. It just gave us introductions to Fennec. Ah, I think I have some ideas. Oh, go on, go on now. Um, I believe like a lot of people think, um, the, uh, the people in charge of, uh, what's it? I can never pronounce the name of that planet. Come, Kamo- What is it called? The Camoans? Kamo- what is it called? I, I can't remember the name. But I, I can never, I can never perfect the pronunciation, but the people of the planet where the Bad Batch and the clones are made, uh, come on just had it anyway (laughs) a lot of people assume Finnick was just hired by them I have a theory AJ I have a theory that they say in this episode that they are starting to lose the formula that Django Fett had given them right Mm -hmm. what if they called Boba and Boba is who is hi- is who hired Finnick, and this is how their relationship began. It didn't begin in the Mandalorian. They've known each, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, Boba's young right now. Yeah, yeah, but we know what Boba was doing at, at a young age. He was trying to kill Jedi. He was a mercenary. Um, no, that's not. I wasn't thinking. I was trying to figure out what timeline this um, Bad Batch is in, but. I- I don't know why I keep forgetting. There's just so much that's going on right now. But yeah. (laughs) Um, So I think Boba was uh, is being paid by them, and I think they might want to utilize some of Boba's uh, genetic code to see if they can continue to flourish with these clones. Clearly, we know it it ultimately won't work because we get stormtroopers. Um, But if they're looking for the ultimate, the ultimate uh, soldier. I believe it's whatever Omega has in her body that they're trying to get back. So my theory is. So why why is why is Boba trying to get Fennec? I think he was hired by them. I think he was hired by them to go retrieve um to retrieve uh Omega. But clearly, I don't think Boba's looking to scour the whole universe himself. So I think he knows Fennec. So he just enlisted in Fennec. Like I'll share half the half the reward with you. See if you can find them. You know, you're a better tracker than me, or whatever the case may be. Um, now where I think this is connected to the Mandalorian, we know um Dr. Perishing, right? We know Perishing is the one that was doing the experiments on uh Grogu. What a lot of people forget is the patch that hurt uh that that he's wearing is of did you ever look up what the, the name of that goddamn planet is? I can't yeah. pronounce it. <laughs> oh my god. If I could hear it, I I, I think I could pronounce it well. Oh, yeah. I, I'll figure out figure out how to see you can talk to me. You can talk to Okay. It. So obviously that planet still exists and they're still utilizing it. We also know that they use that planet in the game that is no longer canon, but also in the Force Unleashed. I believe that whatever they're doing with Omega is the first step in what they end up doing with Grogu. Remember how I told you last week, I think Omega might be force sensitive. 
I think Omega is the first step on what Palpatine will eventually use as his cloning technology because of the blood in the trials that they're using on Omega. I don't think it's a coincidence that Grogu and all this, the experiments they use on Grogu and not seeing the, 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 test, the test pods or whatever. That's not the first time they've done that. I think Omega might be the first time they've done it and it worked. And that gave them the blueprint to continue it with Grogu. So I think in this episode, it, it led a lot to who hired Finnick. I don't think that's obvious. So that'll be fun to see how that plays out. And also what Omega has or what can she do that is so powerful, they need her back. So to me, that's what I got from this episode. And that's why I said this episode, it had some stuff for me, man. It had some stuff for me because I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out what is so special about Omega. Because I, I think I told you all this, or maybe me and you talked about this, AJ. It can't be that she is a genetic, genetic makeup of, of all of the Bad Batch. Because if you're telling me she can essentially do everything that they can do, why do I need a Bad Batch? The show could literally just be called Omega. <laughs> so to me, her powers can't be anything that they have. So I'm curious what her abilities are that we've never seen before or we've never seen within the show that will pop up. You, did you get the name yet? It's Cam The plan is Camino. I think that... Thank you, Camino. Yeah. Thank you, Camino. And they're Camoans or Camoans. Camoan. Camoans or Camino? Yeah. I, I hate the I hate Camino so much. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's like the world's worst tongue twister, bro. I hate Camino so much. But anyway, I think Camino could lead to um not Camino. I think Bad Batch could lead to the first time we will have seen Boba uh and Finnick. I think Boba is working with Finnick. So that's why I took this episode a little deeper than what the episode actually gave us. As in, that's what I, was, I was just going by the episode. I wasn't going by theories or anything. Okay, then yeah, okay, then sure. Well, we know this from Clone Wars because there's so many episodes in a season. They do kind of, you know, lull us to sleep a little bit with some of these. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said in my tweet. I said I said that um, not every episode was going to give us bangers and stuff like that, right. but. Because we we have twelve more episodes anyway, so it's and, not really a critique. Really, it's just a observation. Yeah, and to be fair, with how short these episodes have been, that seventy minute episode might have counted as like five episodes. And that first episode was amazing. Yeah. So maybe they kind of were just like, "Well, we gave you guys a lot in that first Let's episode. Let's take a break for a little right. bit, right? So yeah. relax a little bit before <laughs> we get to before we get to where we're going." So. I don't know. I, I'm really hoping in this next episode we see Rex. I, I don't want them to keep putting this off. Give me Rex, man. Give me Rex. Um, so I, I don't know. They're setting up a lot that we see in Mandalorian. Them talking about um, the tags that uh, each person has to have in order to travel from planet to planet. We heard about that in the Mandalorian because we know that Din Djarin's ship does not uh, have any tags. Yeah. And it's why they weren't able to trace him. Um, so we, we do learn a lot and what a lot of people forgot about AJ that I thought I pointed out, but I guess I didn't. I apologize. Mandal uh, Bad Batch gave us our first look at the death, at the death bots that we saw in the Mandalorian. Yeah. And, um, in the first the training, episode. The training, yep. um, so yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, I didn't, I didn't bring it up either. I was supposed to, I was like, nah, I, don't know. So I, 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 I forgot. I thought I did, but I guess I didn't. But, um, so then, yeah, there's. There you go. There's food for thought right there. So a lot of this will bleed into the Mandalorian. I think the reason why a lot of people assume that this show doesn't bleed into the Mandalorian is because of the time gap. But I think what people have to remember is these are first trials of many trials that I assume the Empire goes through to perfect what we end up seeing in the Mandalorian. The testing on Grogu, that's not the first time they've done that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, the dark troopers, that's not the first time they've tried to create them. So it's the idea of this is how it all begins. And then we see finally how it all plays out in the Mandalorian. So yeah, so I appreciated this episode. It wasn't a banger. It wasn't. It was not. But I didn't get lulled to sleep like I know some people did uh, with this episode. Like it wasn't episode two of Mandalorian season two. 
where it was just like you could have thrown this whole episode in the garbage. <laughs> um, but I ultimately enjoyed it. Um, you know, are you ready for Rex, AJ? Or are you okay just, you know, waiting the court? I'm definitely ready for Rex, yeah. I need him, man. Goodness gracious. I don't man. think we're going to get him for like two more episodes, though. Really? But I think that they're just going to focus on the um, development of the team and Omega first, and then we'll get a little bit more, more into like Fennec and then Rex and then the other characters too. We might get more Saw Gerrera as well. So I like it. I like Saw Gerrera, man. I, the more I can see of him, the better. Mm. Keep getting for, keep giving uh, Forrest Whitaker's character the love. Um, all right, so that's all me and AJ got for you guys on this all new episode of Star Wars Bad Batch Review. We want to thank Joe for joining us talking some Star yeah. Wars news. That was a lot of fun. This is probably the most civil me and AJ have ever been in it. Um, I really did think that a Ahsoka conversation would get us get us heated, but we handled it pretty maturely. Um, so uh, we got to make sure the next time we pod, all we do is scream. We, we got to make up for that. We, we can't just be out here getting along. <laughs> next week. <laughs> that next week. Happen. Yeah, next week. Next week. Um, but we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Please make sure you're liking, subscribing, and commenting. Share your thoughts. What did you think about this episode of The Bad Batch? Who do you think would win Ahsoka versus Luke? Uh, what are your thoughts on you and McGregor? We should do more verses on here, too. More verses? Okay, we let's think of some really good ones. verses on, on these podcasts, too. Let's think of some really good ones uh, yeah. to kick off each episode. Um, some fair ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Some of course. fair ones, not not with the chosen one versus the one that the chosen one's dad trained. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's let's do some more <laughs> fair ones. Um, all right, so yeah, let, let's definitely do some more verses. I like that. I want to do more verses and more fan casts. You know how I like my. Fan I, cast. I think who's doing the um Twitter again? Is it Canon or Joel? Yeah, Canon. Canon. Yeah, I think you should do more verses on that on um, Twitter account. All right, I'll talk to him. That's that's what his page was before we converted it to GVN. It was it was very much a, a versus page. So I'm sure he wouldn't mind getting back into it. Um, but all right, so make sure you guys stay tuned for an all-new episode next week. Please, at the recommendation of me and AJ, go check out um, Army of Dead. Yes, so it was amazing. Check it out. Please check it out. Uh, form your own opinions. Do not let twitter make you think good or bad that's why me and aj aren't saying it was amazing go see, just go see it go see it form your own opinion we enjoyed it but that's just us um so make sure you guys go check that out also please make sure you watch the all new episode of figure it out that we did uh this past week talking about as aj called me such a traditionalist talking about accurate <laughs> Um, and why it matters. It's no, important. it was the other guy. It was the other guy that was getting pissed off. With oh, the... he? No, well, you got to listen to the episode because he was <laughs> not alone. I was right there with him. Oh, uh, okay. He was, he was, he was, he was <laughs> speaking through Pete for sure. Um, but we were very passionate about the Mephisto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it, it will still piss us off. Um, really quickly, before we end this, actually, no, we can end this. Thank you guys for staying tuned. <laughs> we'll see you on an all new episode, same time, same place next week. Till then, peace.